hear me clearly. So I won't use the podium because short guy plus podium is nightmare. Yeah. So uh, my name is Hafiz. My students call me Dr. Hafiz, but you all can call me Hafiz. So I work in uh, UPSI uh, as a senior lecturer, and I am uh, teaching educational technology for future teachers. For future teachers. So. Uh, UPSI is the premier education university in Malaysia. We are the largest producer of teachers in Malaysia. So we were previously a teacher college, teacher training college. Now we evolved to a university. So I'm teaching there. Uh, a bit about me. Uh, before we start, I'm an autodidact. That simply means I taught myself. Uh, apart from coding, I taught uh, myself how to play piano. So. Uh, if you have, you know, uh, anybody uh, developers here? Yeah, if you, um, do you have a formal education for, you know, coding? Or do you rely on, you know, searches, web searches, Google, YouTube videos? Both? Oh, alright, okay. So you might as well, uh, you know, have a, uh, an autodidact, right? Yeah. Alright. Um, I'm also a Google Certified Trainer, so I train also um, teachers how to use Google products, Google tools, especially Google Suites uh, in teaching and learning. And I started uh, using WordPress um, in 2011 as a user. Uh, there I used the, 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 you know, the free version and I don't really customize it because I don't know how to code at that point of time. But uh, I seriously went into the WordPress development when it was around 2014 to 2015. Uh, all right. uh, and uh, I have my university recently to adopt or to, to, uh, you know, to jump into uh, WordPress uh, to host all of the faculty uh, websites. Uh, my research and development interests are, as you can see, online learning community, e-portfolio, uh, assessment tool, AI, the application of AI and AR education, and also you know, new tech pedagogies. Uh, but enough about me. So I'm here to talk about how we use WordPress in education. Specifically, how WordPress can fit into the needs of educators. Right? Uh, so this is an academic life uh, in a slide. So generally, we have these five uh, responsibilities. What may you uh, may have experience with us educators, probably one of them teaching, right? But we also have, especially in um, you know higher education institutions, we have other rules. Like for example, we need to do research, we need to apply for grants, uh, and also publish the, 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 the uh, you know the results of the research. And also we do consultation and community service. Uh, I won't focus on all of the, um, you know, the rules in this talk. I will focus on just two. Research and publication. Plus, I will share with you a bit of a, you know, what, not to say guideline. Um, I will share a, a model that I use when developing or managing um, you know, web development uh, projects. Okay. Um, so, WordPress in research and publication. So, uh, this is a, sh uh, a sharing of my experience. I was previously, um, you know, a doctoral um, student in University of Warwick, UK. And um, during that time, it was uh, three and a half year. I was three and a half year there, and I need to support myself apart from you know the allowances given by the government. Is it really? much to support me and my family there. So I, um, luckily, I you know, managed to get a job in the university itself as academic technology project developer. So it's essentially a full stack developer. You uh, entertain the customer, you first uh, analyze what the, what the needs, and then design, develop, and deliver the product to them. Um, so in UK, they have this REF, Research Excellence Framework. So in REF, they have a requirement for each and every research project, uh, they need to publish the findings to the public. So 
made, made the, the, the findings of the research to be known to the public. So one of the ways that they chose was to build a website, hence my role there. Uh, so uh, I worked on a few research projects there, and uh, one of the projects I used it was actually the last project before I uh, resigned from the rules and graduated with PhD. I used WordPress. So that was the within 2014 and 2015. That was when I discovered how easy it is to uh, develop uh, a WordPress website. Before that, before uh, I went into uh, I went to, to do my PhD, I tapped a bit about uh, on, on, on using Joomla. It was a nightmare. Uh, the intro, okay? It was a nightmare. So uh, when I started to use WordPress, I immediately fell in love, fall, uh, fell in love with it. Um, so this is one of the um, earlier projects that I worked on. This is on Drupal. So first, when I pick up the role, I focus on the front end. So I'm 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 that guy who you know transitioned from a graphic designer to a developer. So it's and it's a natural progression from you know from graphic designing to front to designing the front end. So I uh, developed uh, you know designed this uh, front end uh, for this project, uh, and they like very like it very much. The concept is very very um, you know unique for them uh, because what they have for this project is a collection of uh, BBA Shakespeare, black and British. Asian who have you know taken a role in a play on Shakespeare, Shakespeare's play. So they have that kind of database. So immediately I was thinking when developing or conceptualizing this project, I immediately talked about thought about um, you know do you know do you remember the playing cards that they have that we, we used to have like Pokemon cards, right? You know these the kids these days. So I immediately jumped into that kind of idea and make these profiles of actors as playing cards. And uh, if you if you go to that URL, you can see the concept being uh, transferred into a website. So uh, and then I worked on a project called Projection Projection Project, uh, and this is uh, on Omeka. If you have heard it, uh, if you if you haven't heard of it. Omeka is an equivalent of WordPress, but in the uh, museum, history, arts, humanistic community. Yeah. So uh, that's one of the project front end, and I started dabbling at the front and back end with, uh, in this project. It's called uh, Hispanic uh, Liverpool Community uh, Collections. So in this project, I use Romica uh, to develop the back end, and I also design it, uh, the front end. If you go to the uh, the website, uh, you you can notice how how hideous it is. Because because that this is <clears throat> this is the first uh, this was this was the first um, project I managed to develop front end and back end. So it was more of a tinkering than developing, actual developing. So uh, if you found bug, please don't contact me. <laughs> Alright, okay. Uh, and 100 days, uh, so this is the last stand. So you know, you, everyone know Napoleon, right? Napoleon Bonaparte. So everyone knows how he was defeated, uh, the Waterloo, but not, not everyone uh, knows how he Came, uh, how he went from the Isle of Sicily, I think, to being defeated uh, at Waterloo. So there was a 100 day gap. So this uh, website documents the 100 days of his journey. So every year, starting 26th of February, uh, the website will reset itself and display one item at a time until 100 days. So uh, this, I also developed this front end. -end. This was the last uh, website I developed with Omeka, and then I found my true calling, WordPress. So uh, this, uh, if you can see, uh, you can open people's history of the NHS, 
this is a project. Uh, if you know uh, NHS, NHS is a is national health uh, services. It's much more like um, you know our uh, Ministry of Higher Education. Uh, sorry, Ministry of Health uh, here in Malaysia. So um, this team, this team of researcher, they documented the history of NHS, how they developed, how, who founded it. And it was, uh, this is a community based. So that means I need a community, uh, you know, exclusive members area, public area. And this is also act as an uh, encyclopedia and museum. So very much, you know, a lot of things baked in into this product. And uh, I can say that I am really proud that I can deliver the, this kind of like complexity uh, to, 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 the, to the group. And this is, you know, um, made possible by WordPress. If they, they insist on using Joomla, I'll die already. Okay. So, um, so the this is this is the project requirement. Okay. Um, they want a virtual museum. Can you imagine? The first meeting that I had with them, Hafiz, we want a virtual museum that you can walk into. So that was the, the first project requirement that they, they sent to me. And they want uh, the museum to be thematical, to be, can be arranged thematically. So um, for that, I spent quite a few, uh, quite, quite a few days uh, you know, visiting museums across UK to, to understand uh, you know, what they actually meant by you know, going into a museum experience a museum. So I did a lot of groundwork, you know, uh, going to field study and to understand how the UK people see museum. Uh, so by doing so, I understand what, what, what they want, actually. And they need to have a community contribution encyclopedia. That simply means they want a front-end um, form and people can submit to them and they will review and after review they will publish uh, front end. Uh, they need members area and must look like the New Yorker. So as a visual reference, this is a New, York, the New Yorker website. Uh, at first, uh, it was difficult to convince them otherwise. Um, very difficult to convince them because they have set their mind, I want to look like the New Yorker. I said to them, you can't really look like a newspaper when you want to be a museum. You know, it, it took me quite a bit of time to, you know, to convince them. Uh, at the end, I managed to convince them, but I, the, you know, the, the trade-off that I had to do you know, uh, to adopt, if you can uh, see how the New Yorker used the sun serif and serif fonts, so I think that was, you know, the essence of what they are, they are trying to say. So, the larger part of, you know, when you're communicating with a client, you need to understand what they truly need. You know, whether they want the look of it, they want the, you know, the, you know, the ambience of, you know, browsing the website, things like that. So, when I strip down everything and, you know, uh, if you look into, um, this, um, I use um, serif font for headings and the body text, sans serif. So they say, that's fine. All right, okay. Uh, so some challenges uh, I faced uh, in this project. They wanted me to code it so that they can, you know, make a relationship between objects. So, uh, more often when you go to a, a museum, when you walk into a museum, you will be, uh, you know, there's a row of, usually a row of objects that are similar in nature. So they want to, wanted to do that. Because, um, you know, they, they don't want for me to have all the galleries of the objects. What they want is for them to have a, a a picture of an object, uh, the description of the object, and 
just one big area there where they can suggest things that they or, or user might have, you know, might might like to know. So the related item. So they want it. Um, building collection from several items. So they want to be able to, you know, upload several items and then decide uh, item A, C, Z, F, E is one collection theme under probably uh, the founding of the introduction of NHS, things like that. So they want to be able to do that. Front-end item submission form inside exclusive member area. Yeah. They want an exclusive member area where, where users or audience or, or uh, visitors can sign up. And um, they have this exclusive area where the, the members can submit items and um, you know, uh, put a marker where the item is. This is a location-based uh, item. If it is a location-based and displayed on the map, so that is. Uh, those are the challenges that I face. So you can imagine uh, how I bang my head on the wall quite a few times because this was, uh, you know, my first WordPress project, and it's. I think it's fairly complex for me for a beginner. But I managed to pull it off. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the text is not really um, visible. But anyway, uh, this is the skeleton of the uh, website. So we have the encyclopedia, the blog, and the museum. That's the front end. So the admin, the public and the private can send uh, items inside the database. And the admin, can select the items and curate a collection out of the items and build a relationship between items. So that's that's is I think the, the gist of the of the uh, platform. Yeah. And the tools that I use because I'm a beginner uh, coder, I, I am still a beginner coder. Uh, I use WordPress of course, I use uh, CPT UI, the some post UI. Uh, and also ACF. This CPTUI and ACF has helped me, have helped me, you know, uh, tremendously. Uh, because of these two uh, plugins, I can do wonders. Uh, I can cut uh, the development time almost probably you know, 20 or 30 percent of the, of, the, of the development time. And uh, for front end, I use underscore start starter team and also uh, foundation sites. I don't use uh, Bootstrap because I don't know, I don't really jive well with the, the way Bootstrap is, you know. But it's similar. It's similar. It's just front end framework. So uh, projects closer to home. So those are the projects that I've done uh, when I was in Warwick. Now when I came back uh, in. PSI, uh, it so happened that they knew that I can code. So I was the only academician that knows how to code. So they grabbed me immediately and said, Hafiz, I have a task for you. Can you try and uh, design a website for a very small unit? They, they called it uh, a mobility unit. This mobility unit uh, in charge of you know, they exchange students from uh, UK, US, and, and every international coming in and be local students going out. So that you need to be in charge of that. So they want um, me to, you know, to create a beautiful site for that uh, uh, unit. So after spent um, uh, over a month developing it, so I came up with this uh, website, mobility.upsi.edu.my. So it's a bespoke, uh, bespoke website that caters to the needs of that unit. So that unit, the needs uh, are quite simple. They want to be able to, for the faculties in UPSI, to submit um, exchange program or summer camp to them electronically. And they can... Uh, they can get the application of programs, submissions, oh, sorry, submissions of the program, and they will review the program, and then they can just click uh, approve, and the program will immediately available front end to students. 
uh, for the part of the students, they want the students to be able to browse through um, the uh, the website uh, and see all the camps uh, available for them to apply and then apply online and submit uh, the, the form. It's, it's very simple. Um, so this is the skeleton for the mobility uh, website. So the front end, uh, that's the student front end, and at the bottom there is the faculty black front end. They need to sign in and then submit the you know the new program or summer camp to, to the uh, unit. So uh, in the back end, uh, the admin will be uh, will be able to filter or approve uh, new submitted courses. Uh, they can uh, manage new applications from the students. So it's quite simple, and this I also use the stats that I've uh, shared with you just now, ACF, CPG UI. Those are the two, you know, uh, plugins that I that I use currently. Is using, yeah, I'm using, yeah. Uh, and this is an ongoing development. It's tedious right now. Don't ever <laughs> open it because this is uh, ongoing development. I don't. Um, I think. Uh, the USAC ICT have opened this to, to public, I don't know why, uh, but it's still in development. So this is my faculty, Faculty of Human Development or Faculty Pembangunan Manusia. Uh, so I help my faculty to develop um, uh, the website. Oh, before that, uh, before coming to this, uh, when I presented this, to my university, uh, that was when they decided to move from Joomla to WordPress. So I, I, I like to think that I am instrumental to that change. <laughs> All right, okay. So that is why uh, I I'm working on this my faculty's uh, website. Uh, so uh, for academic purposes. For faculty, if you want to approach, if you are a service provider, uh, you are a design company, a design developer company, if you want to approach uh, a faculty in a university, you need to understand how they work. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the tips and tricks. Okay. So uh, in a faculty, they will have staffs, uh, programs offered, uh, research and publication, those are the core and consultation. Those those are the core, you know, business of a faculty. So, if you look closer, the staff and the people sits at the core of the faculty, and from the people it develops into programs because these people or academic staff teaches programs, uh, academic staff produce uh, publications and research, academic staff. Uh, you know, do consultations. So if you think about, you know, creating a custom post type, it should be stuck at the center and then develop, you know, upwards. So that's how I'm developing the website right now. Just for the sake of, you know, uh, the community in terms of uh, the data. Because you can link, if you do like that, you can link uh, publication to research easily with consultation with the same, you know, uh, uh, not to say same, but uh, you know, easier kind of navigation. Yeah. So uh, I think that's that's it. I think. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> I forgot one one uh, one tiny bit uh, detail. The framework I use, uh, the model that I use for uh, developing any kind of uh, projects. ADDIE. If this is new to you, this is a part of um, instructional system design. I teach. I'm teaching this to my students. Uh, it's not. It's not really uh, meant exclusively for education. You can use this for any kind of development, web development, uh, product development, any kind of development. So the first thing is analyze. Of course, you have to analyze your clients, your clients' needs, especially your audience. You have to understand who will visit the uh, website. Who will visit the web website? 
and uh, analyze the design like uh, what we have just now, the mampu, the 40 plus requirements. So that you need to take into consideration. Uh, and developments and goals. Analyze what's actually the faculty or you know the, the, your client's goal. And develop the project around that. After that, design. Do a design brief, a mock-up. And establish a visual you know, um, handshake with the with, with the client so that when you start development your client will say oh, I want to change this I want to add this uh, I can see smile faces it's it's really it's really you know uh, for them you see when, when they say okay um I I would like to have this feature or these flashy features it's not really that simple you know to you know to embed things when you are you have started developing. So mock-up first, you can use uh, Envision mock-up, just present to them. That was what I did when I uh, um, when I did the, the history of NHS. I presented to them and I debated with them because they questioned me, why this font? Why this, uh, why this color? Why this background? They questioned everything. They need to understand why, why, what's the theory behind this. And as a developer, come academician, I need to, you know, to dig deeper. Uh, like for example, I use uh, the above full kind of like um, uh, the theory of not not theory. It's like the concept above full. You, you, are you familiar with above full concept? Right. So I. When they throw questions to me, I throw concepts to them. You know, when, when you can't convince them, confuse them. Okay? Alright, so and then you develop actual uh, development and then uh, you need to adhere to the milestones and report to the clients. I've done this, I've done this, so this is this is a progress right, right now. That's development. Implementation, you deploy, you test it from the test server first whether it's okay or not, and then deploy it. And then after that, you evaluate. You evaluate. You, you can embed uh, Google Analytics um, inside your website and track, uh, sorry, track uh, the, you know, the performance of the pages, where the, the, the behavioral flow, to see whether your design really fit the goals. So that's how you, how, how you analyze and, and evaluate. You, you evaluate the goals, right? Uh, so lesson learned. You need to analyze. You need to carry uh, need analysis. Everything you need to analyze. With analysis, then only you can you know uh, put down that these are the project requirements, and this is what you can do. After that, draw outlines boundaries for the project. Please and please draw outline because when you work with acad academicians, they want to you know put as many functionalities as possible, you know. If you can, if you can, persuade them. Go minimalist. Right? Negotiate requirement with actual feasibility of the uh, and development. Just negotiate with them. If you can't do that, or if you think that the, the features that they requested are not beneficial or are not contributing to the goal, just, just say. Just say. Academicians, they can you know, um, accept you know any any kind of feedback, things like that. Uh, they can be perfectionists. Be cool, you know. I need this. I need this. I need this. So you need to counter them back with you know theories and you know hard facts. Like for example, they want they want uh, the the above fold to be. Uh, have to have this, 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 and this. You can, if your judgment is saying that the buffalo shouldn't be uh, cluttered with those kind of things, you need to say it to them. Otherwise, the you know they are or they will limit this creativity. As designers, we try to express ourselves through our products. Try to be creative with our product. But with that, with that in mind, 
we have the 40 plus mampu uh, guideline that we need to adhere. So uh, we need to, you know, try to find middle room somewhere. Yeah. So I think uh, that's about it. Yeah. Thank you. Any question from the floor?